Our right. next speaker today is Julie Gutman, who's a faculty member in the Division of Social Sciences. Um, and Dr. Gutman's research explores the intersection of knowledge practices and political economy and the construction of healthy food and bodies with a focus on the history and geography of California agriculture in particular. Her recent work on the study of technology in agricultural I, I, agriculture is funded by an NSF grant. So Dr. Gutman's title for today is Agri-Food Tech Discovers Silver Linings in the Pandemic. Julie? So like many others, I didn't set out to research COVID. COVID came to me as it became an unavoidable part of my existing research. So I have been heading up this um, National Science Foundation funded project. It's a, it's a collaboration with agri-food researchers across three UC campuses. And we're investigating Silicon Valley's recent foray into food and agriculture as sites of both innovation and investment. And so one of our research questions revolves around um, questions about how the tech sector defines itself and represents the problems it undertakes to solve. Um, so what we've observed is that sometimes the, the um, entrepreneurs talk about very big challenges, they're vast in scope, but often kind of ill-defined, while the solutions they proffer are notably narrower, driven less by public need than what technologies they actually can provide and what investors might be, um, be willing to fund. So enter COVID and a glaring problem to which agri-food tech can now be a solution. Um, and so we've seen an almost instantaneous repositioning. So to give you a couple of examples, this is just from industry newsletters and, and, and um, blogs. We saw one industry newsletter wrote of the silver linings from the dark cloud of COVID-19, an open letter from the founder of Indie Bio, which is a biotech incubator, exhorted its companies to find opportunities in the crisis, stating that this pandemic will amplify the need for your existence. And then there was an article in the Ag Food News Funder, which pointed out that venture capitalists investing in agri-food tech are better positioned than almost all of their peers as essential services. Food and agriculture constitute a relatively safe bet, given that the quote, the only thing people are buying right now is food. Um, apparently, venture capital is not too interested in toilet paper. So as part of our project, we've been tracing, now we're tracing how the pandemic is, sh is shaping agri-food technology, including what kind of technologies are gaining traction and which ones are falling by the wayside, because we're kind of doing an overview of the sector. Um, probably the most noticeable and not surprising pivot is toward technologies that promise some sort of touchless production um, or highly sanitized environments. And so we're seeing renewed justifications for cellular meat, which is produced in bioreactors, um, or other alternative protein products that don't, that replace the need for livestock production. We're also seeing more interest in an indoor vertical agriculture, which is um, practiced in very controlled environments. Um, and we're also seeing, of course, interests in robotics in both harvest and food delivery and much else. It seems to promise no touch, no human touch. Um, all these are concerning directions. Um, those most likely to replace, be replaced by robots are predominantly um, people of color working in um, farm and food service um, and who are also bearing the brunt of the virus exposure right now. I should say that it's very unlikely that um, the meatpacking workers that are getting the worst of this um, will likely be replaced by robotics. Everybody who studies meatpacking agrees that a robot just cannot work because of the high speeds in which they operate in those meatpacking plants that require all this precision and all the proximity that's causing these people to get ill. Um, so there's the question of the, the, the new emphasis on robotics and whose lives will be lost by that. And then the other thing that's concerning for us is the renewed emphasis on sanitation. Obviously, for as a public health measure, sanitation is very important right now. But we worry that um, a lot of the kind of 
an, what I'll call an antibiotic approach to food and agriculture kind of undercuts a lot of the precepts of agroecology and all sorts of integrated agriculture that recognizes the need to work with different biota, that antibiotic approaches to agriculture and food have actually gotten us into the situation we're in. So we're tracking those as kind of concerns. Um, what do we hope to accomplish? Well, in a general sense, we want more public awareness of the limitations and implications of technological fixes that are not in, in accordance with deeply understood problems. In a specific sense, we hope to encourage conversations at the very least and even collaborations between social scientists and uh, engineers and entrepreneurs so that forthcoming agri-food technologies, especially those justified by COVID, will be welcome, useful, and reflexive with regard to their social and ecological implications. <laughs>